Have you ever wondered about the different types of antibiotics and their uses? What are they typically used for and what are the typical dosages? Well, you're in the right place. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of antibiotics. These tiny yet powerful substances have revolutionized medicine, saving countless lives by battling harmful bacteria. In the realm of antibiotics, diversity is key. This video will guide you through the maze of these medical marvels, from penicillins to cephalosporins to macrolides. Each category, unique in its structure and function, has its own story to tell. We'll explore what each type is typically used for and the common dosages prescribed. Understanding antibiotics not only broadens your knowledge but also empowers you to make informed decisions about your health. So let's embark on this journey of discovery, peeling back the layers of complexity surrounding antibiotics. By the end of this video, you will have a robust understanding of these medical marvels. First off, we dive into the world of penicillins, one of the most commonly used antibiotics. The story of antibiotics begins with penicillins, a group of antibiotics originally derived from penicillium fungi. These life-saving drugs were the first antibiotics to be discovered, opening up a whole new world of medical treatment. One of the key features of penicillins is their effectiveness against gram-positive bacteria. These are the bacteria that have a thick cell wall made of a substance called peptidoglycan. Penicillins work by interfering with the formation of this cell wall, causing the bacteria to burst and die. This makes penicillins particularly effective against a range of infections caused by these types of bacteria, including strep throat, syphilis, and certain types of pneumonia, among others. Let's move on to dosages. As with all medications, the dosage of penicillin depends on a variety of factors, including the type and severity of the infection, the patient's age, weight, and kidney function. But to give you a general idea, the typical adult dosage for penicillin V, used for mild to moderate infections, is 250 to 500 mg every 6 to 8 hours. Now it's important to note that the duration of therapy can vary widely. For some infections, a course of treatment might last just 5 to 10 days. For others, particularly those that are more severe or hard to get rid of, treatment might need to be continued for several weeks. Remember, antibiotics are not a one-size-fits-all solution. It's crucial to take them as prescribed by a healthcare provider and to complete the entire course of treatment, even if you start to feel better. Stopping treatment too soon can lead to a resurgence of the infection and contribute to antibiotic resistance, a serious global health issue. So that's the gist of penicillins, a key player in our antibiotic arsenal. Next, we take a look at cephalosporins, another widely used class of antibiotics. Cephalosporins, like penicillins, belong to the larger group of antibiotics known as beta-lactams. These antibiotics are named for the beta-lactam ring, a part of their chemical structure that's crucial to their antibacterial activity. Uniquely, cephalosporins are divided into generations, each with its own spectrum of antibacterial effectiveness. Let's start with the first-generation cephalosporins, such as cephalexin and cefazolin. These are typically used for skin and soft tissue infections, surgical prophylaxis, and urinary tract infections. They are particularly effective against a broad range of gram-positive bacteria. Then we have the second-generation cephalosporins like cefuroxime and cefrazil. These have a broader spectrum of activity and are often used for respiratory tract infections, including pneumonia. They are effective against some gram-positive bacteria and a wider range of gram-negative bacteria. The third-generation cephalosporins, like ceftriaxone and ceftazidime, have even greater gram-negative coverage. They're frequently used for serious infections like meningitis, gonorrhea, and severe hospital-acquired infections. Fourth-generation cephalosporins, such as kefepime, have an expanded spectrum of activity against both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, including Pseudomonas aeruginosa, a particularly tough bug to beat. Lastly, we have the fifth-generation cephalosporins like ceftaroline. These are used for skin infections and pneumonia, and uniquely, they're effective against MRSA, a type of bacteria resistant to many antibiotics. The dosages of cephalosporins can vary widely depending on the specific drug, the infection being treated, and the patient's age and kidney function, among other factors. For instance, cephalexin is typically given in doses of 500 mg to 1 gram every 6 to 12 hours, while ceftriaxone might be given as a single dose of 1 to 2 grams per day. Cephalosporins, a versatile and powerful group of antibiotics indeed. Moving on, let's delve into the world of macrolides. These are a group of antibiotics known for their large macrocyclic lactone ring. 
But don't let the scientific jargon intimidate you. Think of them as the superheroes of the antibiotic world, swooping in to save the day when penicillin allergies come into play. Macrolides are typically used to treat respiratory tract and soft tissue infections. You know, the nasty stuff like bronchitis, pneumonia, and skin infections. They are particularly effective against atypical bacteria, the ones that don't fit the standard mold, including Legionella pneumophila, Mycoplasma pneumonia, and Chlamydophila pneumonia. One of the most commonly prescribed macrolides is azithromycin. It's often given in a Z-Pack, a five-day course of treatment. On day one, you take two pills, and then for the remaining four days, you take one pill a day. Another widely used macrolide is clarithromycin, typically administered as a 7 to 14 day course, depending on the severity of the infection. The dosage is usually one 500 mg tablet twice a day. It's important to remember that like all antibiotics, macrolides should be taken exactly as prescribed by your healthcare provider. Completing the full course is crucial, even if symptoms improve, to ensure the bacteria are thoroughly defeated and to prevent resistance. But what about side effects, you ask? Common ones include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, similar to other antibiotics. However, macrolides can also cause an unusual taste in the mouth. Not exactly a bonus, but a small price to pay for getting rid of a bothersome infection. Now remember our superheroes, the macrolides? They are an excellent alternative for those with allergies to penicillin. You see, allergies can cause hives, itching, and even life-threatening anaphylaxis. In such scenarios, macrolides step in, offering a safe and effective treatment option. So there you have it. Macrolides, a lifesaver for those allergic to penicillin. They're not just another class of antibiotics. They're a crucial part of our medical arsenal, fighting infections that other antibiotics might not be able to tackle. Now, let's switch gears and talk about allergic reactions to antibiotics. While antibiotics are undoubtedly life-saving, it's equally critical to be aware that they can also trigger allergic reactions in some individuals. It's not uncommon for people to experience mild allergic reactions to antibiotics. These may include symptoms like a skin rash, itchiness, or hives. These reactions are usually not severe and often resolve quickly once the medication is discontinued or completed. However, there is a more serious allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis, which requires immediate medical attention. Anaphylaxis is a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction that can occur within seconds or minutes of exposure to an allergen, in this case, an antibiotic. Symptoms of anaphylaxis may include difficulty breathing, swelling of the lips, tongue or throat, rapid heartbeat, dizziness, or loss of consciousness. Remember, timing is crucial in these situations. If you or someone else experiences these symptoms after taking an antibiotic, it's imperative to seek medical attention immediately. Anaphylaxis is a medical emergency that can lead to shock, cardiac arrest, or respiratory failure if not treated promptly. Another rare but serious reaction to antibiotics is Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which causes the skin and mucous membranes to react severely to a medication or infection. Symptoms may include a painful red or purplish rash that spreads and blisters, eventually leading to the top layer of the skin dying, shedding, and then healing. It's essential to note that while these severe reactions are relatively rare, they underscore the importance of using antibiotics judiciously and under the supervision of a healthcare professional. If you have had an allergic reaction to an antibiotic in the past, ensure this is clearly communicated to your healthcare provider. Lastly, remember that allergic reactions can occur even if you've taken the antibiotic before without any problems. The body's immune system can change over time, making you allergic to a drug even if you've previously tolerated it well. Remember, safety first. Always monitor for any signs of an allergic reaction when taking antibiotics. In this video, we've explored the fascinating world of antibiotics. We've journeyed through the landscapes of penicillins, cephalosporins, and macrolides, each with their unique uses and typical dosages. Penicillins, the heroes in battling a broad spectrum of bacterial infections, have been used for decades. Cephalosporins, on the other hand, are the versatile warriors, used widely due to their effectiveness and safety. Then we have macrolides, the lifesavers for those allergic to penicillin, providing an alternative route to recovery. We also touched on allergic reactions, a crucial aspect to be mindful of. From mild rashes to severe anaphylaxis, awareness of these symptoms can make a significant difference in outcomes. Now, you're equipped with knowledge about antibiotics, their uses, dosages, and potential allergic reactions. Remember, antibiotics are a powerful tool in healthcare, 
but they should always be used responsibly.